time to spend a day in the life with me and my turkey. It is going to be the pre-Thanksgiving day and Thanksgiving day day in the life vlog. It's gonna be a two-dayer. I hope it'll make it too long, but I'll do my best to keep it short. But we're gonna prep today. We're going to prep tomorrow and I will show you a few things that I make and I'll put this video up on Friday. Just to show you a day in the life of a Weight Watcher, healthy lifestyle, styler, doing Thanksgiving. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Starting off breakfast. And now what I'm doing is I am making one of my big veggie scrambles or veggie hash. Yeah, it's going to do a hash with over easy eggs. And it's going to be enough for two days. This way tomorrow, I don't have to think about breakfast. It's already prepped and ready for me. And it's really going to be good. I have potatoes, peppers, onions, a chicken sausage, a zucchini, a slice of Canadian bacon. So it's two points for my potatoes, one point for my sausage. So it's three, I think the whole thing technically. It is three points, but I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna cut it in half and then I'll add some cheese on top and we'll have breakfast, we don't have to think tomorrow. Because remember, just because we're having a big indulgent dinner doesn't mean we don't eat all day. There's, that just doesn't work. So if you make yourself a good, hearty, healthy, easy breakfast, your day is gonna be good because you're starting off good. You're starting off just getting things done and skipping breakfast because ah, I got too much to do. Take the time for breakfast. Doesn't have to be elaborate. Like I'm making it today and I just think a hash is very rustic. And I'm getting my veggies in. I'm getting some protein in. I'm getting some good carbs in. So I'm going to show you my dinner. My breakfast. My, dinner. my breakfast when I'm ready to eat it because I don't want to take too much time up chopping chat because I've already chopped. I'll just show you when we're ready to eat. And there she is. I did add some spinach. Look at that. Half for today, half for tomorrow. I'm all setting myself up for a decent day. Breakfast tomorrow. Check off the list. I'll let this cool before I put the lid on. That is the one thing I've done differently lately is more veg. Bulking up veg. So... They should say your half, your half your plate should be half vegetables. That's hard for some of us. It's just hard to keep them in, especially like for me in the summer, we have lots of fresh produce in New Jersey, but winter it's like you have to buy it all from Florida and California and stuff. So it's a little bit more pricier. Good start to a good prep day. So I'm gonna get my eggs made and then I will show you my breakfast. My mouth waters for this now. Shocking. Shocking. And here is my completed breakfast. Now the whole entire hash was two, three points. So half would be one and a half points or we'll just round it up to two. And I did put a laughing cow cheese wedge on top instead of the sprinkle cheese, which is in the mood for it. So it makes it kind of creamy in there. So, and my eggs are zero. So this is my three point veggie hash bowl with hash for tomorrow. Mega tip for any day of the week, get your water ready to go. Don't wait for you to want it, have it ready. I keep it next to me. I also put a little true lemon uh, packet in there so it makes it a little bit like lemony, but full of ice, full of water, lose it like you're gonna live it. Read your mantra. Read your, you know, whatever keeps you going, put it on a mug, talk to Miss Wendy, and, you know, that that's, you know, how we do it. I, I don't wait for me to want it, because if I waited for me to want it, I'd probably never fill it. But when you keep it next to you, you'll be surprised how you actually go towards it. You see me in the lives do it. I'm not thirsty, but it's there, and I just drink it, so. Water filled. Let's get some prepping done. All right, we are getting ready to make our cranberry sauce. Yes, I have my cranberries. Yes, they're frozen. I rinsed them off and I put them in the pot. They will thaw. I'm gonna add the water and the monk fruit. I just added the water and I'm going to add a half a cup of monk fruit sweetener. Did you know, I just saw, and I will post it in the group, that monk fruits just came out. I think it's new. It's made with allulose instead of erythritol. So if you guys, you know, who are fearful of that, 
can order that. And I used to get all those from Trader Joe's. I'm getting a little bit. We might have to put an order in since it's a Black Friday special. I, I'm willing to try it. So we're going to cover this a little bit lower. Here. We're going to let it come to a boil. I guess it doesn't have the oranges for the front. Yeah, I don't. It don't. You don't really need it. You could do it without the orange and the lemon zest, but we'll just do a plain today. Guess what? Nobody's going to know the difference here. No, it's just really good to have, have homemade cranberry sauce. What's funny is when I first, I've never made this until, hasn't been that long, maybe 10, 12 years. Um, we used to always have a can. That's how my mother did it. She never made it. I always thought it was hard to make cranberry sauce. I always thought you were going to get the skins in there and nope. You boil them suckers, they pop. You don't see a skin at all. So it's kind of like, where have I been? I got a little bit chilly, so I put a little sweater on. So we're going to let this simmer away. It'll, it'll thicken, it'll pop, they'll pop, they'll thicken. We might put a little lemon zest, a little lemon juice in there for a little brightness, but we're good without the orange. Again, you just gotta go with the flow. Is it gonna make that much of a difference? I doubt it. But I'm just, I need to look up the Pound Droppers pumpkin pie. Now what I usually do, I think, I think, I think, she uses almond milk. I think I sub out protein. Cause I have pumpkin protein, so why the heck not? I'm pretty sure I do that. Um, yeah, so we're going to grab all those ingredients and I will, you'll join me in a sec. While our cranberries are cranberrying, we're going to make our clusters pumpkin pie. Now I am using today, is a few tablespoons out of it, but I'm not worried about it. I am, I mentioned it in a, um, what I eat today from my Thrive Market Hall that I, did I, I think I mentioned it there, that I tried their uh, organic pumpkin because I'm not a fan of Trader Joe's. It's too watery, but I will say the Thrive one is not. So this is it right here, look at that, nice and thick. So looking for a good organic pumpkin, might I suggest Thrive Market if you're a member. It is a member membership-based company, so you have to be a member. Let me grab my, I can leave you on, right? I know, the place is a mess, but it is what it is. So let's put our ingredients in. This is my version of pound droppers, you know. So it's a little bit different. This is one third cup of granular brown sugar replacement. Uh, a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm just gonna use my homemade vanilla that I'm still using, but I'll use it on special occasions. I feel a pumpkin pie is special occasion. Okay, one more, back on. Spices, teaspoon. Now you could put any spices you like. I do just shy of a teaspoon of cinnamon because I think sometimes it gets a little overbearing. And I don't add the nutmeg and I don't add the clove. I don't. I just add cinnamon and pumpkin pie spice. But you know what? You can follow her recipe and add whatever you want. I do a nice teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Because I figure all that are in the pumpkin pie spice. You know, that's how. That's how I roll anyway. Some salt. Just to give it a little. Okay. Two eggs. You could use egg substitutes. You could use egg whites. I'm using what I have, and I have a lot of eggs right now. So that's what we're doing. Okay. That white there. It's very simple. And I'm using the Premier Pumpkin. You could use milk, you could use anything. I've used Caramel Premier back before they had this out. Yes, I've been making this pie, cheesecake, I mean, it, this crosses pumpkin pie a long time. Probably since Points Plus days, and wherever the heck she had it out. They say this for a snack for later. And that is it. You just combine well. Oh, didn't I get, didn't I get the whisk for this purpose? Oh, some days, just because I'm multitasking, I am cooking my cranberries right here and my pie. Or, yes, it is a pie, I guess. Get those eggs incorporated. 
So you could put this in a pie pan, you could put it in a cake dish, you could put it in muffin cups, whatever you want to do with it. So that's all she wrote. That is it. Doesn't get any simpler than this. It's a zero point crustless pumpkin pie, per serving anyway. If you ate the whole thing, you would have to count this, which would be a point, and maybe the sugar substitute, I don't know. So it was points, it's points, it's not points, I don't know. So all those lumps and all those little egg bits incorporated. All right. I'll get the oven on, we'll get this baked, and we're, we're ahead of the game, people. It's only 12.30. Have our little, cute little pie plate. I actually inherited this pie plate from Joan, from Joan's pointed pie plate. <laughs> pointed pie plate. <laughs> Joan was clearing out. She's, she doesn't like stuff. So anytime she cleans, I'm always there for her. I'm like, I'll take anything and give it a home. And this was a beautiful pie plate that I said I would love to have. So, yep. Gotta love a woman who is a minimalist. Be their friend, because you get all their stuff. <laughs> they just scrape it out. Now I'm putting my um, pumpkin pie in the toaster oven, because I don't, it will fit. I have a big toaster oven, so I'm hoping it won't matter. It shouldn't. So, bake this. I think it bakes for 45 minutes, but again, follow Pound Dropper's recipe, and it will, she will hook you up. So again, pie, checked off the list. Let's check on our cranberry sauce. All right, ooh, she's been bubbling away for about 15 minutes. You can see how they're starting. Oh, they, a lot of them have burst, and it is starting to thicken. Look at that. So let this go for a little bit more. I'm going to get my apple ready and maybe zest that lemon and get that lemon in there. Look how beautiful it looks. If that doesn't speak holidays, I don't know what doesn't. It's a beautiful, vibrant cranberry red. Again, I need to brag about this apple core that I got in my Taste of Home subscription box. Easiest apple core ever. I'm gonna show you. You place it right, that stem right in the center, and you just push and twist. Not even a lot of pressure. Out the bottom, pull it back. Look at that. I mean, and you just go, and she's done. That's all she wrote. I'm surprised Bailey's not here looking for some apple. I'm gonna chop this up and we're gonna add to our cranberry sauce. Alrighty, look at that. Yes. We dump our apples. Um, I do peel them. I don't know if you have, I mean, I always, I've always peeled them. Um, any apple will work, whatever you have on hand. Honestly, I don't know if it's like, oh, you should, you know what, I use any apple I want. Okay. That's all. And this apple is going to soften and you won't even know it's there. Oh, look at that. It is luxurious. Luxurious. So we're gonna get our zester. I got this at Ikea. I get asked this a lot. This is I got this at Ikea. And I have my lemons. I'm just gonna zest on the small side. You could do the big one, I just do the small. Just zest some lemon in there. And I did find one orange in the thing, so I will take some zest off of that. And this will give it a nice little hint of citrus. And I'm not gonna do a lot because we're just gonna give it a little something, something, not a lot, something, something. And you can totally leave this out. The apple will also help it thicken even more because apple has natural pectin in it. That's what Ina Garten says. So if Ina says it, I believe it. So we're gonna let this, like I said, finish. It is gorgeous. You could chop your apple smaller if you wanted, like a quick little dice, but I just, you know, rough chopped it. I like a big chunk of apple. So we're gonna grab that orange and get that zest in here as well. I thought this was a lemon, not realizing it was an orange. Yeah. We'll get some zest of that in there. That'll give it a nice little hint of orange. You could add the juice if you wanted. Like I said, I'm not going to bother this time. This is, it's 
Ooh, the big side. I'm getting tired of this thing. I'll be here all day. Maybe my zester needs to be sharpened. I do have my microplane. Oh, I don't know. Maybe this gets some some tough citrus here. Yeah, not getting a lot. It's fine. It like I said, we have enough. But that is pretty much our cranberry sauce. Let it boil a little bit more, but look at that. And it gets thicker when it cools as well. I make this all the time. I don't make it just a thanks. I make this all the time. That's why I have the frozen cranberries in the freezer. Because you can have cranberry sauce whenever you like. Great to have with chicken. It's zero points because I use monk fruit, but you want to add real sugar? I say go for it. It's your pickle. It's your pickle jar. You decide what kind of gherkins you have. All right, and we're going to. Our pie is in the oven. Our thing is almost done. We have to sweet potatoes, but I'm gonna to wait to do that because it's very early. It's only 12.42 and we're almost all the way done what we needed to do today. Get up and get started early. That's the plan. I've decided that those little cup of mandarins in there. Why not? Drained them. I feel like it can only enhance it. So I thought I'd throw that little addition in. It's not on the wet, it's not on the recipe, but it's in my head. So that's how I roll here on Dish with D. You just never know what's going to come out of this kitchen. Yep. And I'm having a good hair day. I know. I agree. So I will catch you at the end and I will show you the finished cranberry sauce and the baked pie. <laughs> there you go. In 45 minutes, you have nice cranberry sauce. Like I said, you can make these chunks smaller. And when we let it sit and cool, and I will show you how thick it gets. All right, pumpkin pie is done and out of the oven. Cranberry sauce is cooling. So, yeah, you can see how beautifully thick it has gotten. And it's still warm, so it's going to thicken even more. So, there are two things off of my to do list done, and it's only 115. Let these cool completely before I put them in the fridge. Fitting in a quick but nutritious lunch because that's what you do. I have my for the end of the zero, the um, I'm sorry, the vegan queso for one point, heart of palm for zero, cucumbers for zero, radishes for zero, chicken. I don't have to count the breading, which is barely a point, but we'll give it a point. And I have 21 grams of these little cheese puffs, they're gluten free, pizza flavored puffs. They are three points. So that is my. Three, four, five point lunch today. What a gloomy day out. Let's just say it that way. We had a lot of rain yesterday, so I guess it's carried over into today. Well, I have my oven preheated to 400. We are going to roast our sweet potatoes to make our mashed sweet potatoes. I don't know why I started doing it this way, but it works out really well. I get these, I wash them really well, cut them in half, lay them flat side down on a foil lined in, and I roast them for probably half hour till they're done. Then I s then let them cool and then I just squeeze all the loveliness comes out and they're ready for tomorrow. I just have to put them in a pan, top them with some walnuts, pecans, oats, brown sugar, and bake them. Easy. Yep, that's all we do. Grab that. And go down. That is it. Cannot be more simpler than that. I'm trying to find like a flat one and just and go down. Yep, so that's already prepped. So tomorrow, like I said, it's all I'll put the the beautiful flesh into a container and they'll be ready to be put into a pan tomorrow. Easy beasy. Sometimes I cut the ends off, I don't know why. Just depends. Some I do, some I don't. And just go down. Be careful because these are all rocks. It's really get a good sharp blade and go down. We'll be doing a good sharp blade review soon. But there we go. Pan sprayed with olive oil. Cut side down. Could does not get any easier than that. 
Let me do the other couple and then we'll get those baked away. This one's a bit longer, so I'll just go like this. Then the other side. You could just make big sweet potatoes if you wanted, but they, they love them mashed when you doctor them up with a little bit of brown sugar and some nuts and some oats. Always make sure you have firm control because knife slips, you're gonna lose a finger. We don't want you to lose a finger. These are the pack I got at Aldi. So there we go. Ready to go in the oven. Oh, like I said, I'll, I'll keep them for 30 minutes and I'll check them. I just put a knife in and if they go right through, I know they're ready to go. And I'll let them cool and that's it. Done. Check off the list. Time for a snack. Going to have a Bear Bell's Creamy Crisp for five points. 20 grams of protein and 200 calories. Love me some Bear Bells. I think they're having a big Black Friday sale. So if you like Bear Bells, go check out their Black By the time you see this, it'll be Black Friday, right? Yes. Yeah, so check out Bear Bells to see what kind of launching they're having for their bars on Black Friday. So I think I'm going to have a matcha tea with that as well. Do I want it with almond milk? I don't know. You know, I'll have a, I think I'll have a diet soda instead. All right, here they are after 30 minutes. I just have to peel them off. Look at that beautiful char. And I'm gonna show you how easily, now these are cool because they've been out of the oven a while. A little behind here. So I'm gonna show you how I get the skins off. It's very simple. Okay. Totally cool. Now, I mean, look at this. How this peels right off peels right off. So what I do is I peel off the skins, throw them in the trash. I mean, you could make potato skins if you air fried them. And I put them in a bowl and tomorrow just mash them up and put them in the oven. Top them. Again, we'll show you again how easily. And look at this. The oven did all the work. I just scrubbed them up and we just, yep. I try to make things as easy as I can for myself and this makes very easy work of these potatoes. And I did a, I guess it was a three pound bag I got at Aldi. It was a three pound bag. I don't think it was five, I think it was three. But I just Google a recipe how to make sweets and what, you know, how much brown sugar and stuff to add. You know, life's too short to be sitting here. I know, I love it. So I've been doing this for years now and I will not do it any other way. And what's nice is the roasting gives them such a nice flavor. See that beautiful char? And you're not boiling, you know, the potato and getting rid of all the good stuff. It's all in there. So it's a win-win. I mean, look at that. You could eat it like this. It'd be delicious. <laughs> you know? But yeah, that's how I make my, how I start making the sweet potato casserole. And if we get time tomorrow, I will show you a little bit more, but... I don't know how much how busy I'm going to be, you know, getting stuff done. And I will be honest, it's easier not to film. <laughs> you know that. Um, but if I can, and I think I'm doing all right, we'll turn the camera on. If not, I'll definitely. Like I didn't change my dinner because I got too busy. I didn't even film my dinner. I had a gluten-free roll with some. Um, what do you call that? Uh, steak, like cheese steak. <laughs> I mean, we're doing this together. I'm almost done. I mean, look at that. It just comes right off. 
again. <laughs> I know. It is what it is. But that, I mean, that's just money. That's just money. Smells. The smell of sweet potatoes is intoxicating. So what I'll do is I'll put this in the fridge, in the bowl. Then we will revisit it tomorrow. And we'll just mash it up with a fork or a potato masher. I mean, you can do that now if you wanted. If you wanted to get that ahead, start mashing it. Why not? It's up to you. It shouldn't take me that long tomorrow. But, no, I'm only kidding. But that is it for the potatoes. So this will probably be it for tonight. I will revisit you tomorrow and we will continue our Thanksgiving prep. But let's just mash them now. Right? <sighs> Look how easily they mash. That's all you have to do until so you get the desired consistency and smoothness that you like. Check off the list. I'll see you tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving. It is Thursday and I just was live in the group wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving, but now it's time to get back to dishes. Dishes? Get back to prepping. So I did already clean my stalk of celery and cleaned my onions. This is one I already had started, so two more onions. I use the sweet vidalias. You can use any onion you want. The bird is in the sink. He is hanging out. I took all his innards out in a pot. I will show you. I'll give you a better view when we come down. I put the neck and I get that flap and I had somebody told, told me it was called the butt. I cut that because I don't need it. So I cut that and I throw that in the stock with the heart, the gizzards, the liver, the neck and that butt. So that's boiling away. Well, it's not boiling yet, but it will be. Sausage I forgot to take out, but it is in the microwave defrosting. We will cook that up as we're chopping our vegetables. My shrimp is defrosting. I did I will tell you, I did take a knee in the shrimp, but I'm already cooked. But we're going to doll them up and you'll never know that they were cooked. But I thought to myself, you know what? They were a dollar more. Why am I cooking shrimp when they're... So, they're thawing. The bird is hanging out. I will show you him in a minute. And I'm going to have breakfast because it is 9.15 and I need to eat. So I can get some energy. Um, you get my, let's face it, food gives us energy. So I'm... Having the rest of my veggie hash from yesterday, just like, what, one or two points worth, I decided to scramble up eggs this morning. So I'm going we'll to have an egg and an egg white. Well, I don't know how much egg white. I'm going to pour it in there. I'm just going gonna, gonna to eat it right out of this stinking bowl because then we're going to get to chopping our celery and our onions and sauteing our veg. Um, they're going to come home, they're going to have breakfast, and then we'll get to sauteing. And that is about, I mean, I'm on par. I'm going to get this, I, I will get the sausage cooked, I think, first. I do have, look at that, I have it in the freezer. Well, I knew I had it in the breakfast sausage, so that is in my stuffing. If you haven't, I did a live video a few years back cooking my stuffing with you. My first time on my YouTube channel. How daring was I? Let's do a live cook stuffing with me. I think it was like a little over an hour and a half long. We just chit-chatted and we cooked stuffing and it was sensational. Um, that is, I think, it for now. I'm going to grab my breakfast, and I will come back, and I'll show you everything that I we talked about. All right, there's my pot of turkey innards boiling away. Celery ready to go. Turkey sitting in his bath. And shrimp waiting to get taken care of. So 
that is where I'm at so far, which is pretty good. My um, sausage is ready to go. Just have to cook it up. And my onions are ready. And here's my breakfast. My breakfast is probably two points. I'm being generous because I split it yesterday. So that is breakfast this morning. The rest of my hash with an egg and some egg white. Of course, I saved some for Bailey. Just in case you were wondering. And I'm going to go enjoy my breakfast while this all comes together. I just want to shut the drawer and finish my tea. All right, bird is going in the oven. I'm going to tinfoil tent it so she doesn't overbrown, or he doesn't overbrown. Because I think he was abused, doesn't he? Um, so that you want to just, you know, the outer to get too brown. So I will put tinfoil on, and I will put him in the oven, and he will start a slow roast. And I'm going to start my stuffing. Time to chop the onions. Now these don't usually make me cry. Not sure why, but they don't. I also have my bell seasoning. I think I'm time for another box. These usually last me two years, maybe two seasons. So I think it's time. Maybe I'll get one on sale this week. So I'm gonna, now how much onion I decide to use is whatever I feel like doing. I have two sticks of blue bonnet <laughs> melting in my pan with a little bit of sausage drippings. It wasn't even a lot. Normally I have more, but this brand was pretty lean. So I'm just gonna hack away at my onions and I'll decide how much I feel is necessary. It is a lot though. I, I like I like a lot of onions and celery in my stuffing. I just think that that makes it. And once this starts to smell and permeate the air, it's Thanksgiving here. That smell. That should be in a candle. Stuffing. I should invent that. A sage and onion celery. I would burn it. So let me show you how I chop. Cut them in half again. And I just kind of go down. It's, I don't want to make them perfect, but you know, because I want them to look like I did it. You can chop. You want to use a machine? Go ahead. But I prefer the old knife. You'll be seeing an Econo collab coming up next month. This is a very beautiful sharp knife. This is the chef's knife. And let's just hold it down. There you go. I mean, it makes easy work. When you have a really good blade, you can make easy work of chopping. But be very careful. I'm going to chop these up a little bit finer. So on the board here. Then I'm going to add them to my pan. I'm going to show you my embarrassing amount of onions that I use. because I like my onions here. And they cook down, so it's not like you're gonna put a bite into a raw onion. They'll be cooking in the pan here, when I saute, and they'll be cooking once they go into the oven. I like to use this, um, I don't think they call it a pastry cutter, from the Dollar Tree, but I use it as a bench scraper, and I scrape everything up and dump it. This makes quick work of when you do a lot of chopping, especially things that are little like onions and celery and garlic. You just go like that, you just dump it. So yeah, Dollar Tree for a buck, 25. Definitely worth having in your kitchen arsenal. Yep. Now to the celery. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip. This is what I do anyway. I don't use the whole, I like more onion than celery, but I like to use all the celery with the fronds, whatever you want to call them, because I don't like to eat those, but they're really good in the stuffing. So they all go in there and I get the ugly ones to go in there and all the pretty ones I save for snacking. Because unless I want to use them all, but and I just want to cut them in half, which I guess you should watch. <laughs> cut them so they're not too, um, too big and obnoxious. Because I do find big, celery to be obnoxious but not big onion i guess i'm what you call just liking my onion put them all like that and we just go down and we dice it and i try to get these all the same uniform size
If you see any big hunks, just go back over with your knife and just kind of dice them a little bit smaller. Because sometimes the ends might be a little bit bigger than the other ones. It could be a little bit smaller, it could be a little bit smaller. There we go. We get our bench scraper. I can find it. Oh, here it is. And we scrape it up and throw it with our onions. Voila. All right, next round of celery. So you curl your fingers when you cut. And honestly, when you put the little frilly things in, it makes it really look pretty, the stuffing. It's a little, you know, fancy schmancy. Again, you put in as much or as little as you like of any of these things. I just like a really increasingly amount of onion. It's just me, my personal preference, but you know, you do you, boo, and that's how things work. And I always use the little center because they're not even worth trying to eat. So we'll just give these a nice good old chop and we'll get them in to the pot as well. And there's our vat of celery and onions. I know, it's, it's how I like it. And you will see it all come together when I get the big bowl out and dump it all in and dump the bread cubes in and the sausage and the seasoning and there we go. Let that simmer till everything is completely and utterly wilted or tender. Our onion and celery is almost finished. It looks amazing. So in my big large bowl, I get my cubes ready. Now I use a mixture of the doesn't say it here, the small one and the cube one. So we have um, herb seasoned and country style. One is cubed and one is crushed. I don't use the whole second one because I'm not sure how much I'm gonna use, but you can see that some is crushed and some is cubed. I like the difference in that, but you could just use one or the other. I like to vary it. So I just toss it all together, add a mix step, and we'll put our sausage in there. While we wait for the onions and celery, I'm going to get my stuff out of the uh, my stock. Let me show you that. There's my stock. I'm going to get my everything out and peel off the meat and chop up everything. I'll show you how I do that. So we have our jewels. Now this is just that, but I don't think there's much meat on that, but we are going to get that heart and that liver. Oh yeah. All diced up and into our stuffing. I'm gonna show you how I do the gizzards. The gizzards are a little bit tricky, but this is just straightforward chopping because it's just, I mean, it's just meat. Look at this. It's just pure liver, so it's perfect. You just have to, I like to dice it so you don't really know what it is. It just goes in there. Nobody's ever complained about my stuffing. So everything gets used. Dice it really tiny. So a little flex. Put that part over here, the other. I mean, there's no waste on this. This is just pure. You grab. Stuff them over here. Dump to the next one. Same thing with the heart. There's really nothing that I have to throw out. See, look, when you cut the heart in half, there's nothing I have to... Gizzards are a little more trickier than the other two. Let's dice that up. And I love getting a piece of this when you're eating the stuffing. You kind of... At least I know what it is. It's fantastic. We'll dump that in, and let me get the gizzards. just wanted to show you. These are done. They are just perfection. 
I did season them with the bells. So I'm gonna shut these off. Keep them cool just slightly. You see how much they cook down. Now to my least favorite part is the gizzard. Because see this is kind of like a I don't know if it's called a vein or a tendon or something or muscle. You gotta get that off because that is not pleasant to bite into where the other ones didn't have it. So this one takes a little bit longer to do, but just as delicious actually. So I always like to cut it in half and this kind of like, just run my knife along that little muscle there and just pull it off. So you can see it, but you don't want that. And then once you cut it, we'll get this off too. But see that? It's just really, it's actually luscious. But as it, this one does take a little bit more time to get cleaned up because you don't want to bite into any of that. That is not so pleasant. A little piece over here. You just dice it. Somebody here's looking for a treat. <laughs> but he doesn't get any of this. I mean, look at this. I mean, let's look how beautiful that is. So just dice it and dump it in your stuffing. And then we'll do the same thing to the other, the other side. Now I will tell you the neck, honestly, isn't really worth much, but like there's a little piece of meat here that will pull out. It's dark meat. And you try to get this like skin off of it. You're not gonna get much. It's, it's a lot, it's a labor of love to get anything off the neck. Some people actually really enjoy fighting with it and eating it, so. But I just pull a few, you know, little these pieces off and throw it in the stuffing. Because you, like I said, if you have the time, you can get a decent amount, not a whole lot, because it's very bony. But I make mean, certain turkeys have bigger necks than other turkeys. <laughs> But if you're a person, just be able to love, probably love gnawing on the neck. Eh, I'm not one of them. <laughs> mm. said some meat to be had. Let me look at that. Just as I said, takes patience. If you don't have the time, then I would suggest you don't do it. But we've got a little bit of meat. Not a lot of meat, but it'll add to our stuffing nonetheless. No waste, not whatnot. Now, this butt, I'm not even sure. I don't usually do anything with it because it's very fatty, but if you get in there, there is a little, you know, oyster of meat you can pull out, but it's very, like, see, it's very fatty. It's sometimes it's not even worth, you know, it makes, helps the stubby. It's just, to me, this is not worth it. Oh, that's a little nugget. We'll take that. <laughs> Here's another little nugget right up here. So we'll chop that up. But other than that, yeah, this is just a good stock filler. Look at that. That's fat. I want that. So yeah, got a few little knuckle pieces here. Not much to talk about, but like I said, it was more for stock purposes. This is just a bonus. I'm gonna add that in and we're gonna get ready to assemble our stuffing. All right, we have our breadcrumbs and our sausage and all our chopped gizzards and stuff I already put in here and tossed it together. I just have to get it pre-mixed, you know. So now we're gonna add our ridiculous amount of onions and celery. They are cooked to perfection. Rip all that goodness out of there. 
This is a brand new pan I got from QVC. <laughs> I needed another new pan. It's really nice. It slid right out. So we get that. We go in. Is this even by a vat of stuffing? Yeah. I don't know how to make it any smaller. <laughs> Nor do I want to. So then we get our stock that we made with our chicken innards. And we just pour it in. Now, if you don't have enough, if you didn't put enough water, you could either add chicken stock, turkey stock, or just water. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna dump it in. And you give it a toss. But I didn't add any salt because uh, there's enough seasoning in here that I don't think it needs it. But you, you know, if you want to add your own seasonings, go ahead. I just let the bells do all the work and the cubes are seasoned. We put some bells in here as well. A liberal amount. Do I measure? No, I don't. And more of this. And you could add as much or as little as that as you like, depending on how mushy you want your stuffing. Oh, this smells so good. I'm gonna put the rest of it in here, because it's not that much. And scrape out all that goodness that left at the bottom. That is money. Sometimes I even rinse the pot out and add it in there because, yeah. And there you go. Stuffing completed. This would feed an army. It lasts us all dinner, all weekend. And like I said, you could always do a little bit more bells on there. In my opinion, you can never, never have enough, too much bells. But yeah, I don't do any other seasoning but the bells, the seasoning cubes, the sausage, the celery, the onions. If you want to add salt on your plate, if you think it needs salt, then you can go right ahead. But I like all the flavors to come through. I think there's probably salt in the bells. Rosemary, tarragon, sage, ginger, marjoram, thyme, and pepper. <gasps> this is salt-free. What? I never could have realized that. Just a little bit more. We are not done yet, though. We are going to chop an apple. Put it in here again. Totally optional, but we really like it. You could shred it. You could put cranberries if you wanted. I tend not to like the cranberries, but that is my stuffing. Check off the list for today. On to our next appetizer. I was in a rush. I just didn't worry. I forgot I was filming. From frozen shrimp. Oh, look how good they look. What did I do? I add a little seafood seasoning and a little citrus garlic. Now your frozen shrimp tastes like they're high end. Do they really need a dipping sauce? I don't know. Let's try one. You annoy about people leaving the tails on. That annoys me. Took me less than two minutes for that one. Now, prep our Brussels sprouts. This is a 32 ounce bag, two pounds. And of course, we live in my house, you buy four pounds of Brussels sprouts. Enough said. I'm gonna show you how easily I prep these. After you give them a quick rinse, I do, I usually put four at my, at my counter at once. And I just have at it. I just chop the end off, get those outer leaves, like that. Okay, that's all to the side. And I just do an assembly line. Let's go like this. Now, yes, I could use the food processor. But honestly, this is very therapeutic for me. I do enjoy shredding my sprouts. So again, you can use a food processor with a shredding blade. And you can make quick work of this. We're gonna do this whole bowl's worth of sprouts. 
stuffing inside the mushrooms, ready to go in the oven with the lovely help of my husband who prepped the mushrooms for me. And there they are, ready to go in the oven. There we go. Stuffing in the tray. I'm going to put it in the fridge though for now because she doesn't need to go in until after the turkey comes out. And she still has another two hours. So we're going to put foil on this, stick it in the tray and check it off the list. Stuffing is done. And here's our appetizers, my delicious stuffed mushrooms and my shrimp. Steve did make cocktail sauce, but they're there. They're just gorgeous. This, these were really exceptional this year, I have to say. And the shrimp were absolutely phenomenal. So there you go. It's my little appetizer plate for Thanksgiving Day. I have two stuffed mushrooms, about five shrimp. I have some dip. I have some cucumber and I have a heart of palm. One point, eh, it might be a point, but we'll give it a point. So it's a two point appetizer for me today. Time to get our sweet potatoes together. You remember these from last night? Where we're going to make them into a little casserole. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, don't blink because you might miss something. Half a stick of butter, melted. Now my potatoes are cold, so this is gonna cool down this butter really fast. So don't worry about scrambling your egg because, like I said, once that butter hits these cold taters, they are not going to even scramble them. There we go. Half a cup of sugar. You could use sugar replacement, but again, I'm not eating it, so I personally don't care. You could do cream, evaporated milk. I'm just using regular 1% milk because that's what I always use. Never know the difference. Couple of eggs. Okay. This couple glugs of salt. And a little bit of vanilla extract. Play this open already. And that is it. And you just combine this well. I'll grab my spray. I guess it's a four by four or eight by eight by eight, I think. I don't remember the size. You'll, you'll know what it is when you see it. Let's make the topping. We combine flour, brown sugar, nuts, and butter. I'm gonna have the recipe linked at the at the at the description box below. It's it's not WW friendly, but in case you ever want to make it, it's really easy. I this is the recipe that I follow. And here it is. We just have to cut the butter in. So I think the best thing to do is just get my fingers and cut it in to the flowers and the nuts. Just keep doing this till it gets crumbly and the butter is all combined. I wound up using walnuts because I didn't have any pecans, but that's what you would use. Just keep cutting it in. You will get it all combined. You can actually let it get softer, it might be. Keep doing this. And then we're just gonna sprinkle it on top of our so sweet potatoes. Now some people put marshmallows. We like this topping the best. The nuts and the you know. Get our sweet potatoes and we just sprinkle this right on top. I actually have a little bit of butter left over that I'm just gonna throw in here because honestly. I don't need this little bit of butter left. A little bit of butter left. So why don't we just dot it? A little seep in there and add a little bit of extra goodness. This is a boy's favorite. I'm not a huge fan. I mean, it's tasty. It tastes like dessert. And you could absolutely sub out monk fruit for the sugar and make it lower in point and cut out some of the nuts. But there we go. We're going to bake her. I think she's take bakes about 40 minutes. But like I said, I'll have the recipe linked below. You can go check it out for yourself. All right. We have a stick and a half of butter melted. And we're going to drop our Brussels sprouts and saute them. And all I'm going to add is salt and pepper. That is it. Simple, easy side dish. And as they cook, you just keep tossing them. 
It will wilt, I promise you. This will go down quite a bit, unfortunately. Kind of wish it would stay this big, but I hope it'll cook down and they will look delicious. Let's have a look. Just doing a quick voiceover. There's the turkey. There's the cranberry sauce that we made. If I can get the lid off. Because yeah, I'm so prepared. <laughs> There's our delicious cranberries. There's the Brussels sprouts. There's the stuffing. And the boy said it was the best I've ever made. There's the sweet potato bake. There is a tossed salad kit. There is some brioche rolls. And let's just look at that turkey again. And there is my plate. I counted 25 points for it. That's what I gave him. My cranberry sauce was zero. My turkey was zero. This is our kit and the um, stuffing. Thanksgiving, everyone. From D and Steve. All right, my lovelies. I'm going to end the video here as we sit out to the bonfire. I don't think we're roasting marshmallows. I think we're just having a fire. Steve, it's his, it's his thing. He really enjoys it. So since all the boys are here, we're just going to have a little fire. So I just thank you for spending two days with me prepping for Thanksgiving and helping me along and like i said i will link recipes below if i have them for the things that i made if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below and i will get right back to you as soon as possible and give you the information that you need so if you enjoy this vid video <laughs> give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are new here to my channel dish with thee the weight loss warrior channel come join us to get a healthier you for 2024 you're only a step away from making those great health decisions. So have a great, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And it's, it's the season, my lovelies. Tis the season. Have a great day and we will dish another day.